Mick, a 3 0 win over Albion Sports this afternoon. Uh, how do you rate the performance we've just seen from your team? I thought first half we were excellent, Jay. I thought we moved the ball really well. We've got really good combinations in good areas and we caused them all kinds of problems. Um, two, in my opinion, two stole more penalties, which the refs got right. Um, and then uh, once the keeper's been sent off, it's turned into a bit of a stalemate game. And it's one of them, you know, where uh, I hate playing against 10 men because you end up having too much of the ball and teams put everyone behind the ball, which is obviously the, the way we're in the right to do. And it just becomes a boring game. And uh, listen, I thought we we probably could have been a little bit more ruthless today. But listen, we take three points and we move on. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange game uh, in truth. Um, obviously, started off both teams quite quiet compared to normal, perhaps. Um, then the penalty is the red card, and the goals happened, and then second half, obviously, man advantage fizzled out, didn't it? Really, so it was a bit of a strange game all in all. Yeah, like I said, when you're playing against ten men, it's really, really difficult to keep the sort of levels and the standards and the speed in the game, and you end up having too much of the ball, and you you get a little bit sloppy because you've got too much of the ball, and you know, mentally we've got to be better than that. You know, we can't get sloppy, we can't get bored of having the ball. We've got to keep switching the play and keep moving teams because eventually you will break them down. And to be fair, we we, we have created. Three or four really good chances in the second half. Um, I think Cross is straight to square one for Ollie, which he should shoot. Um, and we've got him behind him two or three times, but again, the last pass just wasn't right. It was behind someone or in front of someone, and the weight wasn't right on the ball. And, you know, it's just sloppiness, and, you know, mentally we have to be a little bit more ruthless than that. Uh, looking at the first penalty then that we were given, um, it came from a Cody Collins cross from the left. It looked like his arms were way out, out outside his body. Yeah, it's still more penalty, Jets. Lad's arms up here, referee's got it right, um, definite penalty, um, and it was a brilliant finish by Oli. You know, the keeper's nearly got to it, but there's that much power on the ball, low into the bottom corner, he had no chance. Um, and the second one's you know, Stonewall, I don't think you'd get a clearer penalty than that. Um, spoke to the ref at half time, and he said, obviously, the double jeopardy rule doesn't come into play unless it's obviously because he's deliberately denied a goal scoring opportunity, it's a red card, so he obviously knows he knows more than me. Um, but yeah, it's again the Stonewall penalty. We've done really well to to keep the ball, move it, and then break it down. And you know, Ollie's got in behind him with a third man run. It was a great little passage of play to sort of for that to develop. And Ollie's gone round the keeper, ready to slot it in. The keepers took him out. So it's a it's a definite penalty. Um, you know, the the rules on on the double jeopardy thing. I'm not too sure. I'm not qualified enough to speak about it. But um, referee said it's it is a red card because he's denied a, uh, deliberately denied the goal scoring opportunity. So I have to I have to take that. Uh, I guess you should say credit to Ollie Allen for stepping up. Obviously, he missed one last week at Handsworth. Obviously, he ended up scoring, uh, scoring and making up for it anyway. But he stepped up and um, could have been a little hesitant, a little bit nervous, perhaps. But he stepped up, he stepped up twice. <laughs> yeah, listen, the, the first penalty was unbelievable. Um, you know, it's against a very good keeper. Um, he slotted it right into the bottom corner with, with real power. Um, you know, it's a proper, proper goal. That no, nobody's saving that. Um, and the second one, it can be a little bit difficult that because obviously. You know, you've put centre half or whatever, whatever centre mid's gone goal, and he, he's held his nerve, Ollie, and again it's the same penalty into the same corner, and he's done really, really well. And you know, that, that's Ollie. You know, Ollie, Ollie doesn't shy away from big moments. You know, he'll always accept the ball. He's always brave in them sort of moments when you need people to be big and be brave. And you know, Ollie, Ollie will always do that. Yeah, just looking back at the red, red card for their goalkeeper again, um, a lot of controversy around a number of things, but potentially could have been outside the box. It was hard to tell. Obviously, I don't know if he saw it in real time. It was, I think it was very close to being outside, but. I'm not sure, mate. I'll have to watch it back. It looked to me like it was inside the box, but obviously you're probably in a better position than I am to see it. Um, to be fair, I've watched it back, I still can't tell. It's, oh, really? it's that tight, yeah. So I think if it's on the line, it's in. So yeah. I think it might have just been in. But yeah, I spoke to the liner and he said it was, he said it was definitely in the box. I think he's probably given it. Um, but yeah, listen, whether it's inside or outside the box, whatever, all he's gone round him, he's ready to score his goal anyway and keep his wiped him out. So. I don't really know, mate, to be honest with you. I'd have to watch it back. Yeah, and just on that double jeopardy rule, again, I don't know the rules, but if that was the other way around, if that was against us, I'm pretty sure I would be very unhappy. Yeah, oh, absolutely, but he reckons the rule is if if it's not deliberate and he's it's a fa like he's, he, he's went to play the ball and took him out, then it's it's a yellow card and a penalty, but because all he's gone round him and he's just he's literally just wiped the man out as opposed to trying to play the ball, he said it's a it's, it's a red card and he, he reckons that's the rules and I don't know he's probably better qualified to, to answer that than me. And then Albion spots went down to nine men um, due to a sin bin um, and right in the halftime whistle we get a third goal, massive slice of luck for Oli, um, but it effectively it killed the game off didn't it then? Yeah, listen, it's listen, it become a bit of a stalemate like I said the second half was boring, Jay, really boring game to watch. Um, 
yeah, I'm disappointed in us in the second half in terms of we weren't rootless enough. We, we didn't move the ball well enough and we become sloppy. I've just said to the lads in there, you know, don't be happy with that second half because you can't go from being you know really good on the ball against 11 men to really poor and sloppy and slow on the ball against 10 men. And that's what happens sometimes when you go down with 10 men, you're training up. You, it, the game can become a bit stale. Um, but listen, I said to the lads at half time that the main thing is, you know, it, it's not about going scoring five, six, seven. Yeah, brilliant, that's nice, but it's about keeping a clean sheet and keeping 11 men on the pitch because games that can boil over quite easily. And I thought we held our, our discipline really well today and we've been really well to sort of stay out of any sort of trouble because them kind of games can easily sort of turn on their head. Yeah, you mentioned the disappointment of that second half and obviously they had an outfielder in goal. I don't think he's had to make a save with him in the second half. I mean, no. the one ball which was bought, he spilled twice and then eventually hacks it away. I don't think we had a shot on target in the second half. I mean, Cross has done really well to get on the half turn sort of inside the box and he's tried to square it to Ollie. Um, you know, Cross probably should just bury that there. Um, he, he's tried to play Oli in. Um, but other than that, we never really worked him. But again, we had so much of the ball. We we probably had 80, 70% of the possession in our own half. You know, we weren't brave enough. We didn't sort of break lines. It was difficult to break lines because they just put everyone behind the ball, but really compact. The switch of play was on all the time, which we done. Um, and we didn't when we when we did switch a player we we didn't really come back out and try and find an opening inside the pitch we sort of locked ourselves down one side and uh, yeah it was just a, it was just a poor second half from, from our point of view Jay and uh, you know I just said to the lads we need to be much better with, you know on, on the ball than that. Uh, having said all that though, a win is a win and three points is three points and I believe that's the first time this season we've recorded uh, three straight league wins in a row. Um, so something that's been pleasing for yourself? Yeah, I think I said to you a few weeks ago since Christmas. Um, there's been a big a real upturn in our performances. You know, some games we didn't warrant what our performances deserved, but I thought since Christmas we've looked a lot more solid. We've looked a lot better in possession, out of possession. Um, we look like sort of pennies dropping with, with a lot of the lads in terms of how we want to play. And I think bringing Rice and, and Tweedy into that has probably helped massively in terms of how we want to play because since the two, it's, it's no coincidence since the two of them come in, we've looked a lot better in terms of both in, in and out of possession. But, Notwithstanding that, I think you know all the lads. I think have been doing absolutely excellent since Christmas, taking on information and, and sort of really sort of kicked on. But like I said, some of the performances we haven't got out of games what we probably should have done. Um, again, we're not happy with, with our league position. We we believe with the squad of players we've got, we should be so, we should be a lot higher. But inconsistency has probably cost us a little bit this year. And I think I said to you last week, if we can keep this group and add two or three quality players to it, I think we'll have a we'll have a good side for next year. And just finally, make a word on Lewis Walters who has missed. Pretty much the whole season, uh, a word on him. Yeah, it's brilliant to have him back involved today. Um, he's been training the last few weeks, training really well, looked really sharp in training. So it's good to get minutes into Walsh today. And listen, we know what we've got in Walsh. It's just trying to trying to keep him sound and you know trying to look after him and trying to sort of manage him back up to you know up back up to speed. And if we can sort of get him somewhere near this season and sort of really hammer him in pre-season, hopefully we have a proper player for next year. Well done, mate. Cheers, yeah.